Ever thought about what lurks beneath the bubbly exterior of the Mushroom Kingdom? When you take a closer look at all these characters, the world of Super Mario quickly becomes a twisted and unsettling one. Mario's a psychotic egomaniac, Luigi's actually dead, so is Peach, Rosalina's the result of an affair, DK's an abused circus animal, and Bowser, the bad guy in these games, is quite possibly the only wholesome character in the entire Mario universe. Hello Internet, welcome to Game Theory, the show that's totally not a one-off episode of Jeremy Klinger that totally wasn't made in honor of MatPat after his retirement. <laughs> it's not like he shaped a generation of gaming content on this platform or anything, he's just sans. So if you've watched this channel for any amount of time now, you're probably well aware that this franchise was never what it seemed to be, and these lovable characters on the outside are deeply, deeply messed up in the head, and there's honestly no characters this doesn't apply to. Today though, I want to make a case for Bowser, because despite having the most tragic backstory of all these characters, he's a genuinely good guy that's at the mercy of continual awful circumstances. Okay, but that doesn't justify him committing mass genocide and kidnapping. No, certainly not. But what if it's not him doing any of it? What if there was a sinister puppet master contorting Bowser into wrongdoing? What if Bowser's merely a pawn, and the real brains of the operation was some other, much more powerful and malevolent force? Someone so evil, so diabolical. It's lemon scented! Strap in, loyal theorists, because today we're taking a plunge into Bowser's hippocampus and digging up some repressed truths about his so called father figure, Kanik. Wait, that little wizard guy? There's no way something that looks like that is the almighty destroyer of worlds, right? Well, what if I told you that's exactly why he's not the face of any of it? All the castles have Bowser statues built into them. All the troops take orders from Bowser, and he's always the last and most important line of defense in whatever schemes they're up to. But that doesn't mean he's the one pulling the strings of everything. Honestly, just looking at him in-game, does he seem like the type of guy to be cooking up elaborate plans? He's often portrayed as a short-tempered brute that's a little bit arrogant, not an esteemed, logic-driven leader. He's an intimidating front for the Koopa operation, but what if he's just that, a figurehead? Most kings and queens present day don't hold much actual power. They're a symbolic head of state that makes little impact on the decisions that get made. And Bowser, or King Koopa, is very much that exact same thing. He didn't assemble this army, he quote unquote inherited it from Kamek. And there's proof of this dating all the way back to the first Super Mario Bros. game, where the manual says, <clears throat> Quote, One day, the kingdom of the peaceful mushroom people was invaded by the Koopa, a tribe of turtles famous for their black magic. End quote. Now, I don't know about you, but I've never seen Bowser performing any magic, besides in that anime movie from 1986 that's not canon. But besides that obscure piece of history, he's never done any kind of magic in-game, and the only characters we do see possess that kind of power are magic Koopas. And if the entire tribe is known for that black magic, its leader would have to be skilled in that regard, no? But if we keep reading, it mentions toads getting turned into bricks and stones. Again, something we've only canonically seen Magikoopas doing. So that is concrete proof that Kamek plays some role in the original Super Mario Brothers. For years now, we've inferred it's talking about Bowser because, well, Magikoopas weren't a thing in 1985 when the game came out. But remember, Yoshi's Island takes place way before this when all the characters were babies, and Kamek's the main villain there. And speaking of Yoshi's Island, that game calls the Tribe of Turtles Kamek's forces. And sure, there's some notable excluded enemies in that game like Goombas and Hammer Bros, but who's to say he didn't acquire their support later on? I mean, there's a couple of decade long gap in the timeline between the baby characters and the ones we have now, and he was definitely doing some expanding in the meantime. We don't know for sure, because unfortunately there's no Paramount Plus original covering Bowser's Under Years, or a visual novel about the Mario Brothers in high school, so we've got to make a pretty safe assumption. And you know what they say about those? But diving deeper into what we do know about Bowser's childhood reveals a pretty sad story about a lonely, a abandoned baby turtle that no one in the world wanted to care for. No one, except for Kamek. That honestly explains so much about his character. Feeling that alienated at such a young age is devastating to overall mental well-being. And that rears its ugly head in some of his adult character flaws. But even that parental figure he finally got wasn't a very positive one for him. I mean, no parents are perfect, but on a scale from Homer Simpson to Hank Hill, I'll let you decide which size which, an evil sorcerer is about as bad of a hand as you can get dealt. Prior to Kamek's influence, Bowser wasn't really doing anything bad. Sure, he was a temperamental child that threw fits and was kind of a bully, but there's a lot of kids like that that become perfectly, 
somewhat perfectly functioning adults. It really boils down to the debate of nature versus nurture. Nature being the genetic advantages and disadvantages people are born with, and nurture being the impact your environment has on you. They're both a crucial part of a child's development, but nurture reflects itself way more in behavior. And since we don't know Bowser's real parents or anything about his genetics really, we have to focus on what we're shown in universe. Bowser was a tabula rasa, or clean slate when Kamek found him. And being introduced to the world through a malignant lens, watching his only real role model command an army and try to take over the universe undoubtedly influenced him to think that very same way. But that merely explains why he acts the way he does. It doesn't justify it. It does for his actions as a kid, but as a full-grown Koopa with the ability to rationalize on his own, there's no excuse for that kind of behavior. Unless, of course, Bowser isn't in control of his own body. Brainwashing is one thing, the actions are still at the fault of the perpetrator, but if the mind is being full-on controlled by a third party, it's a different story. And I propose that's exactly what's happening between these two. Let's stick to what we know. Bowser never kills either of the Mario Brothers or Princess Peach, and they never kill him. And that just begs the question of why? Well, we know he doesn't kill Peach because he's obsessed with her, and Mario doesn't die because of all the one-up mushrooms, but why do they never kill him? Mario's not Batman, he kills thousands of troops throughout his adventure, but the leader is spared? Wouldn't it just be easier to finish him off once and for all and move on in life? Yes, but he doesn't, because deep down, Mario and Bowser actually kinda like each other. The relationship between these two is anything but black and white. Why do they console each other after Peach rejects them in Mario Odyssey? Why do they go go-karting and partying on the weekends? And why do they team up so frequently in RPGs and have almost a sibling-like banter? It's because Mario and Bowser are brothers. No, I'm, I'm just kidding. Their dynamic's almost like a never-ending game of cat and mouse. Or should I say giant turtle and plumber? It's honestly pretty comparable to the relationship between Tom and Jerry. Tom always works up these elaborate plans to catch Jerry, and while he's normally outsmarted, on the off chance something does work, Tom lets him go. There is some kind of genuine bond there, but there's no such thing between the Mario Bros and Kamek. He tries to kill them as babies so they can't grow up to someday maybe thwart his plans. That's gotta be like an all-time low blow, and it proves that Kamek's willing to do anything to prevent these guys from saving the Mushroom Kingdom. And if sabotaging them as babies doesn't work, his best chance at doing that would be hypnotizing their old pal Bowser into causing them harm. But hang on, let's not take a logical leap here. Just because Kamek has a motive and Mario and Bowser don't want each other dead doesn't suddenly confirm he has mind control powers. Well, no, of course not. But it's honestly not as big of a stretch as you'd initially think. He's been shown to make things shapeshift, he messes with the environment in a billion different ways, and he even built the time machine they used in Yoshi's Island DS. So why draw the line at mind control? It's never been explicitly stated, but looking at Kamek's other abilities, is it really that hard to believe he has that sort of power? I think not. But wait, if that were true, why wouldn't he just use it on Mario and make him walk into a lava pit or something? Well, because his magic doesn't work on humans. We've seen toads transformed into bricks and bricks to enemies, but those same magic beams hitting the brothers simply does damage like any other attack. So if you can't finish them off yourself, your best bet would be hypnotizing the largest thing you can, a guy who also happens to be your adopted son, Bowser. If anyone can take him, it's in theory him, right? But there's still one thing that just doesn't make sense. Why, if Kamek's in charge, do we continually see Bowser yelling at him and ordering him around? I mean, what kind of subservient minion is that? That is until you remember, it's a game of chess, not checkers. Make Bowser believe he's the one in charge to keep him happy, and put up with a little abuse to make sure he stays oblivious. Kamek knows he's the mastermind behind all of it. He doesn't need any reassurance. From the very beginning, he saw potential in this tiny Koopa. And while he does genuinely care about him, he's still just a pawn in Kamek's elaborate scheme to take over the universe. Bowser is not the villain. Just a misunderstood, flawed character doing his best in a world that's treated him oh so cruelly. But hey, that's just a theory. A game theory. Thanks for watching.